Okay, so hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we are going to discuss the, today a major vulnerability that we found that threatened hundreds of millions of Android devices and enabled an attacker to take full control of your mobile device. This vulnerability will work on any Android version, uh, and we are going to show you both live demo. And in some scenario, the attacker could take control of your device using a single, single text message. So let's see what we are going to discuss today. So we are going to discuss briefly uh, about mobile uh, threat and what gave us the motivation for this research. We're then going to discuss what is mobile remote support tool and what makes them unique. We will show you what it means if someone were able to, to get control of this tool. And we will finish with conclusions and Q&A. So before we start, uh, we would like to introduce ourselves. So my name is Oad Bobrov and I have more than a decade in re of research uh, in, of, in the mobile cyber uh, uh, space. I started in feature phone and later on moved to smartphone. Uh, I was the former CTO and co-founder of Lacoon Mobile Security, which was acquired by Checkpoint a few months ago. And I'm now leading the mobile threat prevention area at Checkpoint. And I presented at many conferences, uh, Black Hat, InfoSec, and uh, other security conferences. With me is Avi. Hey, uh, I'm Avi Bashan. I was a security, I'm a security researcher now for more than a decade. Started in the PC area and later moved to mobile. I was uh, the CISO and a security researcher at uh, Lacoon. And now I'm leading the security research at the mobile uh, prevention area, uh, threat prevention area in uh, Checkpoint. Okay, and we also would like to thank a few major contributors, uh, Pavel, Daniel, Andre, and Denise which were a tremendous help to this research. So let's get started. So um, let's, okay, so we are go I'm now going to discuss about mobile remote access Trojan or an MRAT. So an MRAT is a tool that can be used by an attacker to take full control of your device. And once he was able to infect your device with this kind of tool, he can basically do anything. So he can read your email, your contact, your text message, and you can also use the sensors of the device. So for example, you can use the a GPS to track your location. Uh, you can use the microphone to listen to the call uh, uh, happening in the room. And there are many known types of emirates. So you have the low-end uh, vendors uh, like Mobistel for MSPY that you can just go online and purchase them for 100 bucks. You have the high-end like Hacking Team, which, is, uh, uh, got, which was in the news lately because they got hacked, and actually it was quite uh, amazing to see how much information they were able to collect for mobile device. And you also have Dendroid, uh, which is a, an infrastructure to create your own MRAT. And of course, as a leading mobile security company, it's very important for us to be able to detect unknown type of MRAT. And in order to do so, we are running a series of engines on any application that we are able to stumble, that we are able to collect or we are stumbled upon in order to collect different capabilities. So for example, when you look on an MRAT, you will see that among other, a, a, a regular MRAT will be able to install other application, he will be able to read your screen, he will be able to simulate user input, and because all of this action are not, not an action that every application can do, he will usually use an exploit or root the device in order to do all, all, all of that uh, capabilities. And what we are doing, we are classifying the, according to capability all the application uh, to the type of malware that they are. But what we saw, we saw that for some reason there was another group of family of, of applications that has very, very uh, resembling capabilities to the MRAT but somehow it didn't use an exploit to do all of these actions. Uh, and this group of uh, applications is MRST. And what is an MRST? MRST is a mobile remote support tool. This tool is a tool that's being used by the support, uh, support guys. For example, if you have an issue with your device, you will call your IT, de IT department, the mobile carrier, the device manufacturer, and they will use this tool in order to help you troubleshoot your problem. So for example, uh, they will need to see your screen, they will need to take action instead of you, and so on. 
And there are, ma there are many uh, uh, big vendors that provide this kind of tool. You are probably familiar with the names that are on the screen, uh, LogMeIn, Support, TeamViewer, Citrix. All of them has a PC component, and now they also have a mobile component to help you troubleshoot your devices. And let's uh, discuss a little bit about the mobile remote uh, uh, support tool and understand how it works. So before I continue, I would like to take a step back and discuss a little bit about Android. So Android is a modern operation system, which means that every application is running inside the sandbox. And in order to get access to other resources on the device or to other application, it needs to obtain permission. And what is a permission? Permission is something that, that the application needs to declare uh, uh, in its manifest. And when the user wants to install an, an, a new application, he will get a list of all the permission that the application requires. And currently, it's a take it or leave it approach, which means that the, uh, the user can either choose not to install the application, or he accepted and installed the application without the permission. Google improved the mechanism a little bit in the next version of Android, but the main principle remained the same. And what is the problem with this approach? Let's say this is a, a, an application, a flashlight application that I downloaded from Google Play. And as you can see, although it's a flashlight, for some reason it requires access to my location, to my photos, to my files, to the internet, and there is no clear reason why it should have it, but as we all know, users just tend to press accept and move on with their life, just forget about you know, what they just installed on their phone. Beside the regular permission that every, app, every application can request, there is another set of permission, which is called privilege permission, that usually only system application can obtain. And a couple of examples are the ability to install other application without any indication to the user, getting, being able to read your screen, and being able to simulate user inputs. And because these are a privilege a, a permission, only an app that was signed by the OEM certificate or that was pre-installed on the device as a system folder are able to obtain this permission. And when you look on an MRST tool, so you will see that they have all the regular permission, so being able to access to the internet, to the device storage, and other, other regular stuff. But in order to really work properly, they, they need exactly this privileged permission. Okay, so the ability to install application, screen, and similar user inputs. And how this MRST vendor were able to obtain this permission. So let's discuss a little bit about the Android customization chain. So Google uh, created the Android open source project. It's then been taken by the different OEMs, for example, LG, Samsung, and others, and they compile their own version of Android with their own pre-installed pre app. Then the carriers take this version and they create also their own version of Android with their apps uh, on it as well. And what the OEMs, what the MRST vendor did, they collaborate with the different OEMs and carrier and convince them to sign the app and the code that they created with the OEM certificate and therefore enable them to get these elevated permissions. And what we did, this is caught our eyes because, we, because what we saw, we saw that there is a, a shared party application that has a system right uh, uh, permission, which is uh, something that is not, uh, uh, is not a standard in Android. So what we did, we investigated many MRST uh, application in order to understand the architecture of these kind of tools. And what we saw, we saw that all of them currently have the same basic architecture. They will have they will have a, a plugin which, is, which was signed by the OEM and therefore is able to obtain the privilege permission. And this application is running in the background. Usually it won't, it won't have any user in, uh, interaction and, use, and user indication that this app is even installed. And it's actually working as a, as a background service. So it takes commands from other application. The second application is what we call the main app. The main app is signed by the MRST uh, certificate, 
And it has regular permission. So it will have access to the internet. It will usually have some kind of user inter uh, interface. And the way that these two applications are communicate with is through the binder. A binder is the native Android inter-process communication mechanism. But what was a, a, a interesting for us was that we, we knew that there is no native way in Android for an app to verify other, the other app identity. Okay? So it's time to think, you know, what, what does it mean? So what do we know so far? We know that we have a plugin that was signed by the OEM and therefore gained elevated per, uh, privilege permission, okay? A permission that usually only a system app has. You can obtain it from Google Play or in many cases it will even come pre-installed on your device. It was designed to take commands and uh, communicate with other applications on the device. But because there is no native way to verify the other app identity, each vendor needs to reinvent uh, uh, the ver verification mechanism every time from the beginning. And I think that Austin Powell summarized it the best. I think that, uh, okay, thank you. So I now let Avi to explain you to what, what, we, what we found. Okay, thank you, Ahad. <clears throat> so what did we find? So we started analyzing the various MRST vendors. And the first one was TeamViewer. TeamViewer, you might, I'm sure you know the name, is a very popular uh, MRST vendor and uh, has millions of downloads in the Google Play Store. So if it's vulnerable, it could impact millions of Android devices. So TeamViewer, as I said, is a very is a main player and collaborates with all of these OEMs uh, LG, Samsung, HTC. So think about it. If we have an issue here, we can uh, impact like, most of the interesting Android devices on the planet. But TeamViewer didn't collaborate only with, with these OEMs, but also with all of these. This is a screenshot from the Play Store, and every square is a different vendor. So it's a lot of vendors, meaning a lot of Android devices. So. Let's do a quick recap of the plugin verific uh, verification mechanism. So, a plugin, what's a plugin? It's an APK, it's an exported service. And any app, the way Android built, uh, is built is that any app can connect to an exported service. And now it's the sur uh, export, uh, ex plugin's job to verify the identity of the connecting app. There is no native way to do it. And this is the code that every manif vendor Re reinvented. So, let's go over, uh, over TeamViewer's uh, code. You, I'll, ha I'll give you a second and try to think what's not right here. I'll give you a hint. And I'll give you a, another hint. So, what you can see here is that the plugin sets uh, a hard-coded uh, uh, number, and then what it does when an, app's con when an app connects to it, it extracts its certificate, the, the certificate of the connecting app, and then it gets the serial number of the connecting, connecting app and compares it to the hard-coded uh, integer, uh, hard-coded number. And if it's equal, it lets the app control the plugin and uh, do um, privileged actions. So, the question is, what's the serial number? So we went to the X509 RFC, and we can see that a serial number is an integer assigned by the CA to its certificate. Okay, that's interesting. But the question is, who's the CA on Android? Who creates certificates for applications? Who, and uh, how, do, how do we sign them? So I'm sure you know that in Android, Every, uh, every developer is actually his own CA because we use self-signed certificates in order to sign the apps. So this means I can create a certificate and I can set the serial number and then, and then sign an app with the certificate. So I can do just this, create a generate a certificate, set the serial number, to the serial number which, which, which will match the hard-coded serial number, sign the app with, and boom, I'll have control of the device. So, let's show, let's show you a demo. Okay. 
So, what are you seeing on your, uh, is it your left? Yeah, it's your left. <laughs> so, what you're seeing on your left is the CNC server, malicious CNC server, and on the right is the device. The device has already uh, pre-installed the TeamViewer, uh, TeamViewer's plugin. And now, what, what I'm gonna do is install an app. It's on the device, but as you will see in a second, it's a, not a suspicious app. It could be from the Play Store as well. And it doesn't require any suspicious permissions, you know, only SD card and full network access, nothing, you know, which would raise any suspicion. I'll install the app. Open it. And once I hit the light button, boom. As you can see, I have from the CNC server the screen of the device. So think about it. Now I can see everything the user does. It's pretty powerful. If the user will now, you know, uh, open, open up uh, his emails, type in passwords, everything he does, I can see. Even if the user uses secure container, secure container encrypts the data on the storage, but it's plain text to the user, so we can read the data, so I can as well read the data. I can do everything the user does. So not only I can view, I can also, um, I can also control the device remotely. So let's just, for example, open the call log. One click and We'll take a few seconds, I have a little bit of lag, but uh, as you can see the log, and I will see it again from the CNC server. I, I can now go to home and maybe, you know, type something. Maybe I'll search for something interesting. Is it something, there's something interesting to do here in Vegas? So, we'll take a second and... Uh, I'm not on the, well, it should be a low, but you had me at a low. Well, okay, great. So this is the first demo, and I'll get back to the rest. Okay, so quick recap. So these plugins have two very important permissions, get the screen and inject user events, simulate user actions. These are wildcard permissions. Two permissions to rule them all. I can now do everything I want on the device using only these, these, these two permissions. I can install more apps that do other stuff. I can have complete control of the device. So this means I can bypass almost every Android security mechanism because I'm the user. And uh, also, secure containers here, it means that they're just not enough, because if I have access to the user, I can, do, I can access everything in the secure container. So, let's continue to the next uh, tool. So we decided to view our support. Why our support is an interesting vendor? Well, they also collaborate with very uh, big OEMs, LG, Samsung, Huawei, Oppo. But in this case, um, the plugins here, uh, we found that in, in a lot of flagship devices, variants of flagship devices, the plugins are pre-installed, meaning that the devices come vulnerable out of the box. Not only that they are com coming uh, vulnerable out of the box, think about it. We sa I said earlier that the plugin is an exported service. This means it doesn't have any launcher menu. So a launcher icon, so the user won't even know that there's a plugin installed. And because it's a part of the system, uh, system image, the user can't uninstall it. He can't do anything. He has to wait for an update by the OEMs. So it's a very tricky thing if we'll find a vulnerability here. So let's go over our support code. This time, no hints. So uh, what does the R support do? It's, again, waits for an app to connect and gets a certificate, but this time, instead of extracting the serial number, it will, it will use a hash code function on the certificate. Okay, so, and after 
taking the hash code, we would compare it to a hard-coded number. So, hash code. Well, a hash, this sounds a lot better, you know, sounds secure, secure a hash. But what's a hash code? Is it an MD5, SHA-1, maybe a SHA-256, or even CRC-32? So, lucky us, you know, Android is open source, so we can just go over its implementation and see. So, going into the code, we saw that uh, the signatures object, that's the certificate object's hash code function, calls the arrays hash code, uh, arrays a hash code function. And going to the arrays hash code fu function, we can see that it does a quick calculation and then returns a 32-bit signed integer. And if, uh, if uh, I'm sure that some of you recognize that this is the de default Java's hash code function. So as you probably know, Returning an integer has only four billion uh, possibilities. That's not too much. It's, we wrote a simple script at home that generated a lot of certificates. And after some time, a few hours, we got a, a certificate that matched, matched one of the ser uh, hard-coded serial numbers. So again, we could sign the app with this certificate and connect to the plugin. So again, so, I won't show here a demo, it's very similar to the TeamViewers one, and we want to show something more interesting. Um, so, what else? So, we found multiple vulnerable plugins. This, I just uh, went over to. Um, we didn't check them all. There's a lot more to do. You can do it at home. And uh, it's important to understand that this issue is not limited to MRST vendors. What we talked about here is that there are apps, third-party apps that are signed by the OEMs, and that they can't verify the identity of other apps because Android doesn't supply a native way to do it. Meaning if there are other apps that are signed by the OEMs, and ha they can have as well these issues. So you can you know, check this out. And it's also important to, uh, to know that because the plugins are signed by the OEMs, this uh, creates a big issue because an app that's signed by an OEM certificate, this means that this app cannot be revoked because there are a lot more apps on the phone that are signed with the same certificate. So if I revoke the certificate, the phone will just stop working properly. So there's no simple way to mitigate this. And think about it more, even in a year from now, from now because uh, the, the, I can revoke the certificate if an if a attacker will get a hold of an old vulnerable v version, even after you know a new fixed version will be out, it could you know just persuade the user to install it and attack uh, the uh, install a vulnerable plugin and attack it because this thing is not going away. So uh, okay, I'll bring I'll call it hard. Yeah. Thanks. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I think that what we saw was already pretty impressive. Uh, but when we investigated different MRST uh, tool, we saw that there may be, be, may be be another angle to attack this kind of tool. And what we saw that maybe there is a way to manipulate the uh, main app business logic and therefore also gain full control on the mobile device. And what I'm going to discuss now is a certificate, is a Communitech, sorry. Communitech is another MRST vendor that was signed by many, uh, many vendor and actually come pre-installed on, uh, on some devices. And when we start to investigate, we saw the, the following behavior. So Communitech main app uh, is accept the SMS command uh, that you know you know, you know uh, that you can change the setting without without them. And one of the interesting command there is that you can change the subdomain uh, of the CNC server instead of the uh, original subdomain of the of the command. And what is even uh, more severe is that you can change the sub the subdomain without any authentication which means that I can at least send the app to work with an invalid uh, CNC server and therefore cause the application to stop working. But the checkmate here was that we saw that the app doesn't sanitize 
the subdomain properly, which means that I can just add another slash to the domain and therefore send the app to work with a completely different CNC server. In, in, in my case, you know, the attacker or the malicious uh, CNC server. So just to uh, recap what I just uh, uh, said, so an attacker can change uh, the CNC server to a malicious CNC server which is with, with a single text message without any user inter intervention and take full control of the device. So let me show you a, a, a short demo. Second. Okay, so so again, I have here the uh, the device that has uh, this application installed, and I'm just going to send the malicious text message to the device. You will see it appear quite uh, quite quick, hopefully. Hopefully, let's hope that the god of a uh, cellular network. <laughs> okay, great, and. As you will see in a second, so I got new message and community tech was open and, and acknowledged that it got command to change uh, uh, you know, to change this, the, the CNC server. And of course, but, but from now on, because I have full control of the device, of course my, my next action will be to just send the home button. I didn't explain, but this is the, this is, in this demo we didn't invest the time to also show you the screen and everything, but it's the same principle and of course it can be done. And this is the CNC server that I'm using uh, to control the community tech device from now on. So of course my next action would just to press home in order to, uh, to take the device you know, and, and make sure that the user won't be able to see that something happened. I can, for example, open, send command and open the call logs. I can, for example, query the list of apps on the device. So let's see if there is maybe another vulnerable app. And of course, again, just an example. I, from that point on, I took complete control on the device with a text message, which is, of course, very, very interesting for an attacker. OK. <laughs> Okay, so let's say, okay, so in terms of a vulnerability disclosure timeline, so we, uh, we reported to all the, uh, to Google, the OEM, the vendors about these vulnerabilities uh, uh, at mid-April. We got responses for most of them. Uh, in, since, since May, we saw that some of the vendors already start to publish new version, and we know that some of the OEM, like Samsung, already also working on, on fixes in their, uh, in their versions. But in August, we are still waiting for some of the vendor responses. Okay, so let's, let's conclude. So Android ecosystem is flawed, okay? As you just saw, an attacker can take full control of your mobile device. And what is even worse is that currently, there is no way to patch it. And this, this problem affects hundreds of millions of Android devices uh, around the world. So what should you do? If you're a technical person, so you can go to our blog after this presentation and check if your device is, is, in, is one of the vulnerable uh, devices. Uh, and if one of your devices is vulnerable, uh, has the vulnerable plugin, you should remove it, again, if you can. Because unfortunately, if it's come pre-installed on your device, you cannot do it. But uh, because this is for technical persons, uh, we also encourage you to take a much more robust security uh, approach and have a layered mobile security solution in your corporate. The first layer should be a, a vulnerability assessment. You should have a layer that continuously monitor the different uh, devices and application on your device and check if they are vulnerable to, to, to any types of vulnerability. And as the last week showed us, there is new vulnerability that are getting discovered all the time. The second layer should be a threat detection uh, that, that will be able to detect if one of the application or, or on your device is able to attack, uh, uh, to exploit this one of these vulnerability, uh, and it's something that you know that should, should keep monitor all the time. And the third layer should be a risk mitigation layer 
that should be able should should be able to help you to notify the user if something happened and to continue uh, to monitor the patching cycle in your corporate. But until then, what we did, we created a light version of our system, which you can download for free for Google Play, and it will help you to scan your device and see if first your device is vulnerable, and more than that, if your device is currently under attack, if there is another application that try to currently exploit uh, uh, your device. Okay, so uh, any questions? Thank you very much, any question? I think it should be, yeah, in a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is it not possible to simply set up a secure communication over the unauthenticated binder? Uh, well, the problem is, is uh, that uh, not the secure communication because binder uh, doesn't just supply a native way to do it. If you do it correctly, you know, even without Android's uh, native support, it would be okay. But the problem is, you know, Android didn't left the choice for developers, you know, to introduce a verification code themselves. And once you probably know, you do a security check yourself. A lot of the times, when you try to inv invent something, you do it badly. So that's but, it. But you know exactly which apps are talking and need to talk to each other. You can hard code the certificates. Yeah, but you need it to, you, you can do it, but you need to do it yourself. The pro, right. uh, what we found that most of the vendors didn't do it correctly, so that's what amazed us. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, so we got response from the vendors and they are releasing new versions for most of them. Uh, as we said, not all of them, and they are releasing new versions of the uh, plugins. Yes, uh, there was a question here. Yeah. Yeah, there were a few that did it correctly, but there were the minority of vendors, not all. Uh, um, well, no. Try <laughs> not to. You know, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe, maybe I missed it. You know, so. <laughs> Well, all the information will be in our blog for what uh, we found, what we found vulnerable. We're not keeping a, a list for patched ver versions. Yeah. Uh, we have well, a link? I don't think we have a link here. It will be. Uh, I think it's through the app. You can also you can get to the blog. Yeah. So the, the through the scanner app, you can get to the blog. Uh, you can just Google checkpoint certificate and we'll get there. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. So how do you distribute this malicious app through the store? Doesn't well, Google sign all the store apps? Well, it's if you think about it, it's not a malicious app. It's an app that uses the plugin just as the main app, the vendor's main app, and sends it to a malicious server. It has a malicious intent. But what it does, it's not malicious. So. There's no way if you don't have something that knows the intent of the app, how can you know it's malicious from the start? But doesn't Google control the certificate used to sign the app when you ship through the store? Google? No? No. 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 Any more questions? Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah.